Next episode 3 of Dr. Stone has arrived and I'm just having a blast watching this show. I love how not serious but also sort of serious this show takes itself and it allows for it to just be fun at the end of the day while also having logical steps for its universe that you kind of buy into and say okay this makes sense for Dr. Stone but of course we're not supposed to apply this to our own world's fundamentals and universe mechanics. Like in this episode they talk about and just kind of explain how this sort of reviving medicine sort of works with how even if you just pour it on their head it kind of causes this chain reaction that will spread throughout the entire body. Of course as we see with Yuzuhira she doesn't actually get the entire body kind of healed so they have to pour a little bit on her toe but for the most part it should cause a chain reaction. They all have cracks in their forehead just from natural decay but it sort of allows for you to heal in the sense like your body will still have the damage but you won't feel the pain and you know die from a wound in your head such as our main cast does have. So it does explain like how they survive for the world you're just not supposed to go further past that saying like okay but how do they really survive? No this is Dr. Stone this is all you need to know and I appreciate that. But the main thing that I truly enjoy about this show that of course like this could just be a slice of life comedy anime in this setting and I'd probably have fun because that's for the most part what these episodes have been up to this point. However, the driving factor that really sells Dr. Stone is the concept of science and just how awesome it is that we can go from the Stone Age to modern civilization much faster in one human's lifespan rather than taking generations upon generations and I can say that for thousands and thousands of times before you get the picture. Because you have a brilliant mind who understands that, you know, gunpowder wasn't around until this point in time we're going to do it right away and he comes to the conclusion of using hot springs to get sulfur and it's just brilliant how you take just the things that have naturally survived throughout time, things that naturally were a part of the earth before kind of human civilization trampled all over it and how you can take that and create basically weapons that will just be you know a simple gun to even weapons of mass destruction if you really want to go that far and build the technology to do that. When you have someone such as Tsukasa who basically beats you in brute strength and hell he's not even clueless like Taiju. He can come to the conclusion of what you're doing, you need something that he can't reflect or just deflect. Hell, he catches an arrow going like 200 kilometers an hour or something they say in this episode, and it's like no, you can't naturally do that, but in Dr. Stone you can, and that's just fun. Dr. Stone wants to be fun, but not like make you say nothing makes sense for this world. It does make sense for this world, it's just you're not supposed to go into our own world's fundamentals, and I love that. I just love how, for the most part, pretty much everyone we've seen up to this point, when they wake up, they don't question it. They just roll with it. We have someone like Tsukasa who's just a brute force. Like, okay, what's our status? Oh, you need me to fight animals? Sure, no problem. Then you have Yuzuhira who is just like, hey, I don't even know what's going on, but screw this. I assume you just say me. I'm cool with this. I'm glad we're not dragging it out because this could easily be a show where every time you wake someone up, they freak out. They're just like, oh my god, modern civilization. My parents are dead. What's going on? But instead, they just say, no, we're supposed to be having fun here. The whole purpose of this show seems to be that we're focusing on fun personalities and how they implement themselves into this rebuilding modern civilization, both supporting the cause, but also maybe going against it as some form of antagonist, as seen with Tsukasa, and I love that. It's more fun for a series like this that, from basically minute one, has tried to be fun. At the very first scene that you see, it's supposed to be fun, it's supposed to have fun personalities, we're not supposed to be super serious. Of course you can have serious elements and moments, but I think just allowing characters to wake up up to this point, and I'm sure there might be some characters who wake up and do freak out more, but just having so far the characters wake up and just kind of roll with it and just, you know, for someone like Yuzuhira, who's like the love interest, of course, she's a more bubbly persona, so it just kind of makes sense that they wanted to go that route, or someone like Tsukasa, who is brute force and trying to punch his way through things, it kind of makes sense how he just rolled with the punches and things like that. The only thing this show really wants to do is have fun and just really explore the concept of using science to rebuild a stone age right back up to the modern civilization and where you can go with that and just the different personalities that will kind of contrast you and try to conflict you and just go against you and that's incredibly fun to me. The overall reactions just continue to blow me away with just the variety of just shock, just impress and just pure comedy from all of the characters. I'm glad that it's not just like Taiju who has the funny reactions. Even brainiacs such as Senku can just go so overboard that I am laughing at the absurdity just being like how do you even come up with this character design but also how do you make it fit for this world so elegantly and I just adore it. It's really interesting though seeing someone such as Tsukasa who it's really conflicting because what he's doing is technically murder but at the same time you kind of question is it murder because basically, most of these people on Earth, they've either lost arms, they've basically been cracked and decayed to the point that 
you know, unless you really piece them together perfectly, will that medicine really revive them? And are some people just beyond able to be repaired? So on one hand, you think because rules and laws no longer exist, those who are awake would essentially write the new Bible, the new book to follow and say, this is what you can and cannot do. So on one hand, he could technically be justified in what he's doing, but if you take our own morals and just modern civilization standards, and someone like Senku would be like, no, this is murder, and we have to stop him. So it's actually interesting how, you know, we don't have a connection to these basically frozen characters, but we do have our own moral, you know, ethics, and we're saying, well, that is murder, but at the same time, you understand where he's coming from and what led him to that path, even though I personally don't agree with his mentality. You at least understand his perspective and what he's doing, but you also agree that he should probably be stopped and some like Senku is more worthwhile in terms of rooting for and things like that. The episode kicks off with probably one of my favorite things in this show up to this point where you have some like Senku being like he can't know of this juice. He can't know how to get the fluid. He can't know how to make it. As long as we can keep that from him, basically my plan to revive everyone will be fine. And then in comes Taiji being like, hey, I got the glass. Let's go revive my girl. I love that. It is such an anime cliche, but it works so perfectly in something like Dr. Stone where it is just trying to be fun and bizarre and just absolutely absurd. And you just love the shenanigans that occur because someone like Taiju just didn't know, but it allows for Senku to kind of pull a fast one being like, okay, let him go get the fluid, we'll make it, we'll revive her, and here's your options. Either basically run away with her or we're going to have to fight. It's really interesting just seeing how such ridiculous personalities somehow fit in such a science-driven show. They're not trying to go super overboard with the science, but they give you enough just taste and it makes you kind of buy into the fact that, yeah, Senku knows what he's doing, he really is creating these things. But we're not focusing on all the details because if we did, it would either not make sense for this world, it'd be trying too hard, or it would just come across as super boring and we could just watch the History Channel and learn how things are made. I love that. It is such a fun anime at the end of the day, and it's why I'm actually kind of curious why so many actually said it took like an arc before the series really got going. Because I'm loving the personalities, I'm loving the simplistic moments between these characters just sitting around talking, or making something be a gunpowder or just bars of soap like in last week's episode. It is so fun and exhilarating watching these characters and personalities bounce off, having fun, having such modern mentalities in such a Stone Age setting, and the anime continues to look gorgeous. I love how they just stylize the character models when they're trying to go close up, even trying to make it romantic at times. They just really visualize this in such a way that it comes across, it's actually kind of interesting, it comes across so beautifully and just as if we are back with Mother Nature. All the imagery behind these characters, the backgrounds, it is back to what Earth used to look like for the most part, past, you know, Senku building some buildings and things like that. And to have it just stylized in such a beautiful way, it feels like it's back to that beautiful imagery that Earth used to have before we kind of ripped apart every forest and just built modern civilization up upon all the beautiful nature and just animal wildlife, things like that. So I actually really adore how the stylization for the characters and just the overall close-up, it actually mirrors the background detail quite a bit to kind of capture that beautiful forest imagery exceptionally well. The voice actors though, I have to say, it's kind of interesting how on one hand, every single character is just so ridiculous you don't want to take them seriously. Just the way the actors deliver their lines, it comes across as if you're not supposed to take them seriously and it is just absolute goofballs. But on the other hand, you do want to take them seriously because they somehow blend this serious atmosphere. Senku more so than someone like Taiju, of course, but I adore that. It is such a weird casting of voice actors that you would really have to cast this perfectly to make you buy into the absurdity, but also the technicalities to the Dr. Stone universe. Something I do have to really praise, though, is Sukasa easily could have been another Taiju who didn't realize what happened and how they were just trying to throw him off their trail and how they're actually trying to build gunpowder. He's someone who naturally came to the conclusion of what was happening, and he's not just a dense brute force. He's incredibly strong. He obviously knows his shit. And I appreciate that there's someone who can actually go against our main character who obviously is not going to be as technically smart as him, but he can piece together things and actually cause a big hurdle for our central crew. And that's incredibly important. It allows for a character to not only be just incredibly dangerous both on a physical level, but also a mental level that he can piece together what you're doing with enough, you know, detective-like work. And it's actually a pretty intense sequence overall. And it's a pretty fun arc just seeing like, it's a race. Can you make the gunpowder? Can you make a weapon to fire something that he can't grab onto and deflect before he reaches there? Because if you can, basically it's game over for him and you'll have to pretty much disagree with the current status quo, at least for the time being. And it's pretty interesting seeing how they're building up to this overall. It's just an incredibly fun world where science rules and it's just 
rebuilding from Stone Age back up to, you know, like 2019, something to that nature. And it's just fun seeing that you could, in theory, for this world, rebuild everything with one man and you just kind of walk out saying, I believe it, I buy it but it's still kind of ridiculous and fun all at the same time. Dr. Stone is just great in my honest opinion. One of the strongest series from this summer 2019 season by far. I just adore everything about the personalities. The more we see, the more I love the cast overall. And just the whole concept of science and just the ridiculous but also sort of serious atmosphere, it just blends into one of my favorite shows from the season. And hopefully everyone else is enjoying it as much as myself. But for Manga Readers Anime Originals, what did you think of this week's episode of Dr. Stone? Where do you think episode 4 is going to go? Obviously no spoilers, please and thank you. Let me know down in the comment section below. If you did enjoy this video though, be sure to drop a like and also hit that subscribe button if you have been new. So until next time everyone, please take care and have a good one.